Hello. For tonight's grisly tale, I'm going to read you a story from Fearsome Tales for Fiendish Kids. These are cautionary tales that I wrote for lovers of Squeam. Tonight's story is called The Cat Burglar. Fedora Funkelfink was a girl of exceptional talents and all of them crooked. She was a first-class forger who could imitate her mother's signature so precisely that even her mother couldn't tell the difference. She got off more games periods than any other person in the history of her school. In one term, Fedora wrote notes from her mum saying she couldn't play netball because she had mumps, lumps, tummy bubbles, flat feet, sticky out ears, cartridge problems in her knees, sick, an excess of freckles, rotten teeth, Chinese flu and a tickly armpit. Whoosh! Straight to matron, no sweat and no freezing purple thighs either. In exams she always came top by cheating. Not tiny cheats like furtive glances at her neighbour's answer, but huge whopping cheats with mirrors that had the whole school admiring her behind her back and started some of the smaller girls off on hopeless crushes. But Fedora Funkelfink was perhaps most famous for her money-making scams. At the tender age of four, she had turned up at school with a packet of polo mints in her pocket that her grandmother had given her in church the day before. She sold the mints per suck, charging fourpence for a ten-second licking and one pound fifty for a whole holy sweet. She had made seven pounds by the end of first break, twenty-one pounds fifty by the end of the day. The next day she bought 70 packets of polos into school and made one pound thirty, which taught Fedora the lesson that often a good idea will only work once. Her most enduring scheme was the charging of girls for the use of the toilets, insisting that they pay her one pound for de-spidering them. When girls complained that there weren't any spiders in the toilets, Fedora would exclaim, I know! Well, that's because I do such a good job. And if a girl still refused to pay, she would grab her collar and drop a spider down her neck until she did. Actually, they weren't real spiders. They were those spiky green stalks off the top of tomatoes, but if Fedora whipped them out of her pockets fast enough, the screaming girls couldn't tell the difference. One summer holiday, Fedora was born. At school there were always a hundred girls she could hoodwink, but during the long summer break there was just her mum and her little brother, and her mum was far too canny to be rolled over, and her little brother never carried cash because he was only eighteen months old, so the opportunities for raking in the reddies were scarce. She tried washing the windscreen of her dad's car when he went to work in the morning and then not letting him out of the drive until he'd paid her two pounds. But he just laughed and drove over her foot. She tried knocking on old ladies' front doors and asking for donations to help the aged. But when they pointed out that they were aged and needed her help, so did she have any money that she could give to them, Fedora ran away and hid in the park in case they gave her description to the police. She even tried setting herself up in the bicycle repair business with a pot of glue, a box of plasters and a tin of tacks, which she scattered over the road to puncture the wheels of unsuspecting passing cyclists. Unfortunately, she had not read her newspaper because on the very first day that she laid her tin tack trap, the Tour de France streamed through her village and 300 bicycles slewed across the road in front of her house and squashed her mother's prize courgettes. Popular she was not. Confined to her bedroom she most certainly was. One day, bored out of her tiny scheming skull and kicking an empty crisp packet up and down the street, Fedora Funkelfink saw a handwritten notice pinned to a tree. Lost Cat. 
Tiddles is a lovely cat who likes sleeping in the sun and chasing those fluffy white bits that you can blow off dandelions. She is my cat, and I am very sad because she has run away. Please help me to find her. She is a mixed-up sort of colour. Her paws are white and her tail is black and she's got a diamond patch right in the middle of her forehead. The rest of her is marmalade. Without the bits, obviously. There is a reward of ten pounds for anyone who brings her home. Angela Tearful, nine and a half. At the bottom of the notice was a blurred photograph of something that looked like a cat, but could equally have been a dog, or a jug of wine, or a sphinx in the Egyptian desert. It was hard to tell, really, but Fedora could smell a money-making scheme a mile off, and she tore the notice off the tree before anyone else could read it. Then she rushed home and dived into her wardrobe. Several minutes later, Fedora was standing in front of her mum's mirror, admiring her hunting get-up. Black leggings, black polo shirt and a black bobble hat that she pulled down over her face so that people wouldn't recognise her. Peering out through the fuzzy gaps between the stitching, she rummaged through her toy cupboard and found an old shrimping net on a split bamboo cane. It was full of holes, but who cared? Fedora wasn't planning to catch shrimps. It was Tiddles she was after, and a cat was bigger by design. Sneaking out of the back door while her mum was fielding an embarrassing phone call from a livid librarian, Fedora had been putting her own books on the library shelves and then trying to find the library for not returning them on time, Fedora ran to the bottom of her garden and wriggled through a hole in the fence that opened out onto a small, triangular piece of waste ground on the other side. This was where the local feline population had a not-so-secret meeting place. From her bedroom window she had often seen them, cats from all over, gathering to do whatever it was that cats liked to do discuss the price of fish, or, or boast about the mice that got away, or just laze around in the sun, licking their ears and flicking their tails at passing bumblebees. Fedora was hoping to catch Tiddles here, engrossed in an animated cat chat, but sadly the waste ground was empty. The shrimping net drooped in her hand, she might have to wait days before Tiddles showed up. That was assuming Tiddles wasn't already dead, squashed into pussy puree by a ten-ton truck with a sucker-footed Garfield on the windscreen. Suddenly, there was a rustle in the bushes over to Fedora's right. She leapt behind a tree and held her breath, sneaking a furtive glance round the thick trunk when she thought it was safe to do so. A huge black tomcat with a scratched nose and a torn ear paced across the grass, displaying his scars like a strutting general showing off his war medals. It was completely unaware of Fedora's presence, and this gave the bounty hunter a brilliant idea. Forget Tiddles. Any cat would do. After all, they all looked pretty much the same. They all had four legs, whiskers and a tail. Besides, Angela Tearful sounded like a real crybaby, and if her eyes were as full of salty water as Fedora expected they might be, Angela wouldn't be able to tell the difference between her precious little tittles and a manky old flea carpet. Fedora waited until the tomcat was asleep in the sun before pouncing on it with her shrimping net. A basket of juicy rat's tails turned into dust as the cat's dream was shattered. It woke with a start and leapt three feet in the air, turning cartwheels in the net, tangling its paws and trapping its tail through the split in the bamboo pole. Fedora dropped to her knees and smothered the struggling cat with her body until she had knocked the wind right out of it. Then she stood up and carried it down the road to Angela Tearful's house. 
Yes, said Angela's mother as she opened the front door. I've brought Tiddles home, lied Fedora. I've come for my reward. Wait there, said Angela's mum, calling up the stairs for Angela to come down quickly. Angela was a tiny little girl with red blobby eyes and pale skin that clung to her cheekbones like wet sheets. Oh, Tiddles, she cried as she ran across the hall with outstretched arms. You've brought my Tiddles back. Fedora raised her hand. Money first, she said, like a kidnapper collecting a ransom. Then you get the pussycat. Can't I see him first? wept Angela, blowing her nose on the ten-pound note. It might be the wrong cat. Has Tiddles got a tail? asked Fedora. And a rough tongue? Angela nodded. Well, then it's definitely her, said the catty Kong girl, holding out her hand for the filthy Luca. But Angela's mother was not quite as stupid as her over-emotional daughter and insisted on seeing the cat first. When Fedora unfolded the day's tomcat from inside her coat, Angela made a noise like bath water slurping down a plug hole. She gasped and grunted and shuddered and shook and wet buckets of immature tears that gushed down the front path like a flooding river and puddled into a deep lake by the garden gate. Is there a problem? inquired Fedora innocently. That is not Tiddles, said Angela's mother crossly. Tiddles is sort of marmalady with white paws and a diamond-shaped brooch on her forehead. Like a queen's tiara, simpered Angela. Then she wailed for the whole street to hear. Oh, where are you, Tiddles? Where is the queen of the pussy cats? Fedora wanted to tell Angela to pull herself together, but the girl needed a shrink, not home truths from a stranger, so instead she said, Sorry to have troubled you, and marched smartly back down the path with the perplexed pussy slung over her shoulder like a moth-eaten mink stole. Well, by this time, Fedora's money glands were right up. There was ten pounds waiting for her in Angela's sweaty palms if only she could find the right cat, or at the very least match up the one she'd already got with the one Angela wanted. She left the tomcat on her father's workbench in the garage while she went inside to find the blurred photograph of Tiddles. When she returned, she had a tin of red boot polish in one hand, a pastry-shaped cutter in the other, and a packet of flour in her pocket. She masked off the cat's tail with sellotape to protect its natural blackness, then set about the poor Tom, rubbing the boot polish into its fur with a duster and buffing it up with a shoe brush until it shone like a bright red teapot. Unfortunately, the result was not quite as marmalady as Fedora would have liked, more crimsony with a hint of bright scarlet. It looked more like a fox with a black curly tail than a cat. But Fedora hadn't finished yet. She filled a baking tray with flour, squirted the tomcat's paws with lashings of wood glue, and walked the bewildered beast through the flour bath. The red fox tomcat with a black curly tail now had four white paws, but still no marking on its forehead. For this, she used the pastry-shaped cutter as a stencil, she strapped it just above the cat's eyes and employed a small brush and a large amount of white emulsion to paint in the queen of the pussycat's diamond tiara. Then she stood back and admired her handiwork. The tomcat was a magnificent fake, tiddles to a tea. 
Whether it was the red boot polish smeared across Fedora's coat and hands, or the thin streak of white paint trickling down the tomcat's nose, or the globs of sticky flour that were dripping onto the hall carpet, I don't know. But Angela and her mother took one look at Fedora's fake and shouted, That is not Tiddles! Well, it's close, said Fedora. Must be worth a fiver at least. Go away, ordered Angela's mother. Four quid? The door was slammed in Fedora's face, causing the polished tomcat to jump out of her arms and escape down the street, leaving a trail of red and white dough balls behind it. Fedora realised that she would have to be twice as cunning to wangle the ten-pound note off her opponent. She returned to the Tearful's house the following night, with a white Persian cat that she trapped in a tree by hanging sardines off its branches. I've got tiddles, she declared, presenting the white ball of fluff to Angela, who was distinctly third-rate at dealing with disappointment. But tiddles is marmalade, she bawled. Was, corrected Fedora. She was so shocked when she thought she'd lost you, that her fur turned completely white. No, shouted Angela's mother. Right, said Fedora. An hour later she was back at the door with a dog. Tiddles, she declared proudly. Is a cat, whimpered Angela, dabbing her swollen eyes. Is inside this dog, continued the girl of a thousand lies. It ate her. Angela's sobs could be heard in Billericay as her howling heart near burst the buttons on her ruffled blouse. No! roared Angela's mother. Right! said Fedora. Half an hour later, she returned with a tennis racket. Tiddles is home, she said, and I claim my ten pounds. Where? yelped the much-gulled Angela Tearful, gullibly searching the empty path. "'In the frame!' exclaimed Fedora, handing over the racket. "'The string's a catgut, but it's definitely tiddles. I checked the twang.' "'No!' boomed Angela's mother. "'Right!' said Fedora. Ten minutes later she was strolling up the path with a red pepperoni pizza in her hands. A pizza? queried Angela, who couldn't remember ordering one. No, Tiddles, clarified Fedora. Flattened by a passing car. Lovely with an olive on top. Angela boo-hooed like an alpine horn and wrung her hands through an imaginary mangle. No, shrieked Angela's mother. Right, said Fedora. But this time she wasn't coming back. She had run out of ideas. Much as it pained her, she would just have to pass up Angela Tearful's measly ten pounds. And that was the end of that. Fedora Funkelfink was not used to defeat. It hung heavily round her shoulders like a dead stag, slowing her down to a shuffle as she made her way home. She was just crossing the road when a marmalade streak shot out in front of her and was hit by a car. There was a thump, then growing silence as the car disappeared into the distance. Fedora peered out into the middle of the road where the flattened lump lay steaming. She checked both ways before edging out to take a closer look. It was a marmalade cat with a black tail and a diamond-shaped marking on its forehead. It was Tiddles, pancake flat, but still dead useful. Scraping the squash cat up off the tarmac, Fedora rushed it back to her dad's workshop, where she inflated its body with a bicycle pump, put some colour back into its mouth with her mum's lipstick, and tied a piece of invisible fishing line round the teeth of its lower jaw to make its mouth open and close. Oh, not you again, 
groaned Angela's mother when Fedora rang on the doorbell a few minutes later. No, I really have found Tiddles this time, said Fedora. Look! And she produced the pumped-up cat from underneath her coat, sat it across her left arm like a ventriloquist dummy, and unwound its rigid black tail until it hung down stiffly like a clock's pendulum. She's pleased to be home too, she said, turning her head away and squeezing a secret meow through her lips whilst pulling on the fishing line that worked Tiddles' mouth. Oh, look, she's saying she loves me, beamed Angela tearful. Hearing her cat mew for the first time in three days, she clapped her little hands together and jumped up and down like a newborn lamb. Oh, Mummy, it's Tiddles. She's come back to me. And that's not all she's learnt while she's been away, continued Fedora, warming to her trustful audience. She's learned how to talk as well. Then she turned her head away for a second time and made the stiffening cat speak in a tongue that Angela could understand. Give Fedora Funkelfink her ten pounds, said Tiddles miraculously. Angela and her mother gasped in amazement. No, actually, give her twenty, because she found me and brought me home safely. Fedora was having trouble with her bees. Oh, Fedora, thank you, said Angela. I'm going to give you 50 pounds because you've been so good to me. Quite right, too, said Tiddles. And Fedora handed over the dead cat in exchange for a crisp new 50 pound note. It's been a pleasure doing business with you smirked Fedora. Then she ran off down the path, leaving Angela and her mother telling their queen of the pussycats that they were going to give her a nice, warm bath, because she was smelling just a little bit yucky. Fedora Funkelfink danced down the street, clasping the £50 note to her chest. It had been the cleverest scam she had ever turned. What a pair of dolts Angela and her mother were. Fancy not noticing that their precious pet was pushing up the daisies. Oh, they'll find out soon enough, though, she chortled, when they tried to force its stiff little legs through the cat flap. She was laughing so much that she bumped into the tree where she had first found Angela's notice. Imagine her surprise, therefore, when what she saw in front of her nose was another piece of paper, another reward, another lost cat. Fedora could hardly believe her luck. She tore the notice off the bark and devoured its message greedily. Lost cat. Tigor is lost. Please help us to find him. He was last seen crossing the common and heading towards Sidcap. He has very distinctive markings. Marmalade stripes with a black tail and a diamond patch right in the middle of his forehead. There is a £5,000 reward for anyone who finds him. Mario Bellasconi. £5,000? £5,000? Fedora would kill for five thousand pounds. This was one precious pussy cat. Her tongue drooled like a water slide as she imagined spending all that lovely dosh. After all, wasn't she the cat catcher supreme? Wasn't her shrimping net feared throughout the feline world? Wasn't she heard something purr behind her? Fedora snickered. Tigor had come to her. This was easier than taking milk from a kitten. She'd have Tigor in the bag and the money in the bank before the day was out. She swivelled round, ready to pounce, and fixed her gaze on the pavement where she expected Tigor to be. But he was four feet higher up. 
with six-inch teeth and a roar that shook the sky. Amber eyes, silky striped coat, paws like dustbin lids. Tigor took one look at Fedora and gobbled her up on the spot. Tigor was a big cat. Tigor was a tiger. But Tigor got such bad tummy ache from eating Fedora that he had to lie down on the pavement and go to sleep. Which is where the circus owner, Mario Bellasconi, found him. So you see, Fedora Funkelfink did capture Tigor and should have received the £5,000 reward. But nobody knew where to find her. Ha 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 